Praise the Lord. What a joy to be part of your worship again today. I trust God that soon we'll get back together and have reasons to enjoy each other's company in every sense of the word. We want to continue our lesson on how to exercise faith. The last time we met like this, we, we continued, we looked at the four points, you know, believing in your heart, prayer, speaking, and then corresponding actions. And I said in this lesson, I will take time to deal with the last two. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the spirit of revelation. The spirit that quickened and brought Jesus back into life. You said if that spirit dwells in us, it will also quicken our mortal bodies. Lord, I'm trusting that you will bring healing to everyone in my congregation today that is listening, everyone who stumbles on this broadcast, that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will come upon him and quicken them, break their needs physically too, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be honored, be exalted, be glorified in Jesus' name. Well, in case this is your first time of just joining us, you were not part of the meeting on Wednesday. Now, we talked about faith. How do you have faith? Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's how you build faith. If you want to grow faith, you don't start by prayer. You listen to God's word. You hear God's word. You need a God-sent preacher to deliver. You see, when God said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh in Egypt and bring my... Now, that word stayed up faith in the heart of Moses. And Moses went to Pharaoh and said to Pharaoh, Let my people go. Who sent you? I am. Who is I am? Now, Pharaoh could not believe the audacity, the effrontery. What could have given Moses that kind of impetus? Now, but you see, when you hear God, Great things fell into, into insignificance. Grammar people would say, great authorities would, will come like, crumble like nothing before you. Faith comes by hearing. When If you hear what Moses heard, you can do the things that Moses did. That's how faith comes. If God gives you an assignment, it, that assignment is conveyed to you in God's word. See, that word, that commissioning word comes, it, it, it generates apostolic faith. And you begin to do things around the world that, that people will be amazed by. That's how faith comes. And then we looked at how to exercise faith. We said, number one, believe in your heart. And I like Romans 10, you know, verses 9 to 11. 11 ends by saying, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. And I like that. If you don't want to see shame, then believe God. Quit worrying people. Put your trust and your confidence in God. That ground level, agree to what God has said, you know, understand it, believe it. And shame in this world is not going to be. How do you stay away from shame? Simply by believing on him and you will not be put to shame. You may come close to it, but you see, God will show up for you. The Hebrew boys never knew what God was going to make out of their situation. They were ready to burn in that fire. But to their own amazement, they met God in that fire. Doesn't it surprise you? It does surprise me that those boys never came out of the fire. They were engrossed with fellowship with God inside the fire. Oh, may your own present day fire bring you that kind of excitement. You are lost in that confusion. You are lost in that situation. That people who created it are confused and are wondering, instead of you being destroyed, they're waiting for you to come out. Because the fire has not lost its power. Those who carried them into the fire died, but they inside the fire are living. To know that kind of glory, to know that kind of supernatural manifestation, you need to believe in him. Not just, you know, small belief. Now, God, I want you to give me rice. You refuse to give me rice. You brought half bag of rice. What is that? People are trusting God for global result. Doing things that will shake the foundation of global systems. We, you see, this lockdown, global lockdown... 
confirms to every meaningful child of God who has been taught about end time events that those things that we are told in the Bible will happen. You know, when you read it in the busy world, it didn't look like they will happen. Can you imagine that animals are taking over cities? Because human beings have been away from those streets and the animals are now wondering, where these people they? We have taken over their world. If you look at those who are doing uh, the green revolution, they're talking about how man will not allow the world to sleep. That the night, God decided that this world would be dark so that those other animals would also have their turn of activity. But man has put light everywhere. Imagine what those animals are now feeling. When we read those things in scripture, then it will look like they will never happen. But you see, this, this Reheza has confirmed to you that those things will. So you need to believe in your heart. If you have been a believer and you have not believed, that's my problem with people who come to church. People come to church every day and believe nothing. Nothing. What would God do? You, you, you have asked God to intervene in your... And the way you talk is still the same. Now, the second thing is to pray. Is to bring those things you believe to God in prayer. And I told you in the last session, my key, my fantastic scripture. Now, now in that place, it's Matthew 21, 22. It says, and whatever you ask, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So whatever, no, this scripture helps me balance my life. I don't see anything that I don't have as anybody denying me that thing. No. That's why I live my life by myself. Whatever I have faith for, I can have. What I don't have is what I cannot believe God for. So there's no man living or dead that is the reason I preach the way I preach. I look up to God. Or the reason I do the things I do. God uses men to meet my needs. That's true. But I don't look up to them. I look up to God. And because they also hear God, God speaks to them. And whatever things you ask for in prayer, believing, hallelujah, you will receive. So I pray, Lord, my wife needs to see her customer. She's giving me this notice. I need to have this money to give to her. Whatever. Lord, we need to do that over here. Lord, remember that my brother here needs this money. Whatever. You ask God in prayer believing, you will receive. So you pray. Let's come to the point for today. Speaking with your mouth. Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You are sick in your body. You have pain in your left little toe. You have pain on in your right hand. And they have prayed for you. They have anointed you with oil. And you are trusting God. The Bible says, if you are sick, call for the elders of the church. So let them pray over you, anointing you with oil. He said the prayer of faith would heal the sick. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So all that has been done, but somehow the sickness has not left. Now, believe in your heart unto righteousness and then confess with your mouth unto, pastor has prayed for me, the elders have prayed for me. I believe that my healing is manifesting. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. You cannot be saying this sickness is going to kill me. You cannot be saying, eh, the way this, oh, we will, this virus, will, we will get this virus and all of us will die, oh Jesus. No. You confess to salvation. We are at home. The Bible says that no plague will come near my dwelling. I am staying in this house. This is my dwelling. No plague will come near. That's your confession. You cannot be reading that and praying over that. And then you are saying we will die. You are saying we will starve. No, no, no. Your mouth has got to say the things your eyes is asking for. Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. Calls. Watch your mouth. If you are in a car that is somersaulting, the name is not to shy me oh, me oh. No, no, no. Call on that name, Jesus. I was telling the story 
of how I was in one turbulent flight last year. We're coming out of NTB, 3 a.m. The pilot said to us, well, there are low-lying clouds. There will be a turbulent time out of here, but I'll do the best to take you out peacefully. And then I had the seat I had wanted to take over once we climbed up to a proper altitude. Then a pastor from another religion, we didn't know from his way of dressing, came and took over that seat. So I was already feeling, oh, how did this man move into that place? And then the turbulence started. People stood up. One brother was praying in tongues. You know, the people don't like you praying. It's rare for you to have somebody stand up in an aeroplane and preach like you preach in the bus. But every time I've been on a flight and there is a turbulence, people have stood up and have prayed openly and nobody, nobody has challenged them. This brother was praying out loud in tongues. People were praying. They were screaming, Jesus! And to my surprise, I was more interested in hearing what that pastor from that other religion will be saying. What do they call in an emergency in their own religion? But I thank God for the name of Jesus. Now Romans 10, 13 says for, you know, it says... Romans 10, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. To so call on the name of Jesus. Say the things, we serve a God that confirms the words of his servant. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans 10, 10. So with your mouth. Don't be saying your wife is a difficult woman. No, no, no. Give her a new name. Princess. My queen. She may be a very difficult, troublesome woman. But your confession is going to turn her into what you are confessing. You serve a God that calls those things which be not as though they were. So begin to call him. That's your boy that's not doing well. He doesn't look like he has a future. Begin to prophesy over him. You will be the next governor. In your time, you will be the leader of this state. Abraham changed his name to father of nations. Not When they call him father of nations, what do you think people did? They laughed probably. They say, ah, this their new teaching has made him mad. The man doesn't even have a child. He's calling himself father of nations. Today, Abraham is truly father of nations. Who do you think is the father of all these people who want to kill everybody in the world? Abraham. Who do you think is the father of the Jews? Abraham. He's father of nations. Nations, not one. But he started out by confessing that's who I am. Physically, there's no evidence. Physically, it doesn't look possible. My wife is hit menopause. And you know, I have a fantastic Romans chapter 4. If you read from verse 16, the Bible says that, listen, who against hope believed in hope. Abraham had no reason to believe God. His wife had stopped seeing her periods. They had stopped having sex. But when God spoke to him, they resumed. That takes us to the action phase. But look at another scripture. In Mark chapter 9, where we began from, you know, verse 24 says, the man said, when Jesus had told the man, the man said, if you can do something, help us, help us, do something. Jesus says, if I can, it's not if I can, if you can believe, all things are possible. The man screamed, I believe. That's what you should be saying. That's your project that you cannot muster courage. What should you say about it? I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. That situation that looks like it's going to overwhelm you. That's, don't say it will overwhelm you. What you say is that, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. That's what should come out of your mouth. If you study Matthew from verse 21 from 18 to 21, 22, you will learn to speak. I always like to tell the story of how when we rented the first place, our 177 at Cairo, God bless our landlady and strengthen her. We were trusting God that we're going to hire a place. And I told them, I said, we're going to hire a place that is fully furnished. We don't have money for chairs. We don't have money for equipment. Lord, give us a place that is properly furnished. You've got to pray some crazy prayers. Trusted God. 
Then a friend of mine, I heard, was looking for me. Then I found him. I said, I hear you've been coming for me the last three days. What's the matter? Anything wrong with you? He said, no, no, no. I, I heard you started church. I said, yes. He said, then your head is correct. And he said to me, I hear of a church that has closed on a car road. Their seats are still there. Their equipment are still inside. And I said, that's the place we are praying for. How can I meet the pastor? And I met the pastor. And the pastor said, well, I got to meet the landlady before I give it to you. We must meet her. And then we took a journey. I gathered all the money we had, 20,000, home and abroad. Oh, on that journey, I can't forget. I kept praying, Lord, we can rent a house without paying money. If you need me to pay the money, you need to multiply that money before we see the woman. And we arrived. And we began to talk. We looked like really wealthy people. Now, our elder had gone with us. And they said, the woman said, well, the house is 50000 a year. you got to pay two years. I'm going to give you a discount. So you pay forty five, forty five, and you bring 90000 And I said, well, thank you, ma, for your discount. But I want to pay only one year. We need, we, need, we need to do many other things. We won't commit all our money to rent. And she said, in that case, you will pay 50 I said, we will pay the 50 And then it was time to perform. So I now said, <laughs> I said to Elder, that bag in your boot has 20000 Please get the money. And the elder said to me, they will not take. I said, excuse me, sir. Are you with me or with them? You can't use your mouth to say they won't take our money. And I said to him, sir, you are the one to pay. So go get the money. And so he went with, with slow motion. He came back. And you know, when you don't have enough money, the devil has a way of bringing negative emotion. So he made a long, pitiable speech and then kept the money. And the woman got very angry. And she talked, and she talked, and she talked. Friends. <laughs> and then I heard her say, look at you, poor man like you. And you came here talking like very wealthy men. Then I knew that I represented my father well. Friends, you must not betray the, the things you have or don't have. When she said that, I knew she was not running us down. When she said that, then I know that I represented God well. So I smiled and I was shocked at what I said. I looked at her and said, Madam, money is not our problem. <laughs> And I smiled. I said, Madam, just tell us when you need the balance. We're going to be here to pay you. And then I was shocked. Her countenance changed. She turned to the young woman behind her and said, what do we do? She said, take the money. I was more surprised than they. And I prayed another one minute prayer. I said, Father, you know we need that place now. If she says until we pay the balance, how do we? You are the only one who knows when you will pay the balance. I need that key today. That one minute looked to me like eternity. She collected the money and I was waiting. What would she say? What would she say? And then she turned to the pastor who took us there and said, Pastor, when you get back to you, you can give them the keys. Brethren, I felt like a man of God. You know how a man, who a man of God is? A man of God is someone whose things are working for. Have you ever raised the dead? That's a man of God. Walking away from where somebody who died just came back to life. That's a man of God. Man, you feeling that feeling of laying your hand on someone who has splitting headache. And as you take off your hand, they're screaming, Pastor, I'm healed. I'm healed. What happened? That's the feeling of the man of God. Friends, it's no money. Money is good, but it's not everything. I put faith far above money. You don't have to talk faith when you have money in your pocket. Speak right. That business is not going to go down. You have prayed that God will be with you. Trust God and stay power. That takes me to the next action, the next step of exercising faith, which is equally important, corresponding action. James 2 Verses 14 to 22. You know, he says, if your brother has need, you don't pray over your brother and dismiss him. If you have two shirts, you give him one. You don't say, no, go, it will be well with you. You have a bag of Gary. Somebody comes to your house and then he needs Gary. You give him some. That's, that's, that's biblical Christianity. 
Your faith is that God will meet his need. And you have what is required to meet that need. It is through you that God... is. So your actions must agree with your prayer. I believe that God has given us that place. That's why I went to see the lady with less than half the rent. Friends, in this city, we have done phenomenal. We have seen God show up with, with, in circumstances that were beyond us. We've seen how houses rented with one cupboard not paid. We never bet. We never knew the, the owners of the place before. But we trusted God. And the people also trusted us. And we never failed. Because God helped us to honor our commitments. This is your turn. If you believe that God has given you the city, for instance, as a pastor, what do you do? Do I sit down and fold my hands? No. I knock on every door. Have you heard about Jesus? They said, no, he died for your sins. It's time for you to come and give your life to him. They said, well, we don't need him. And they close that door. You move to the next house. They said, Pastor, we knew that we would understand, but we really, and then you stay with them and teach them until they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And you move to the next place. That's corresponding. You cannot say, as a pastor, God has given me the city, and then you are not reaching anybody. You take that action. That's why I'm out here trying to reach you in lockdown. Because God has given me a responsibility. I believe that, listen, you need a fresh word to stimulate you to hang on there and not believe the lie of the devil that this is going to bring you down. The lockdown in Egypt by natural forces, the farming that came through Joseph up, that's going to be your story. That's the kind of report I'm trusting God for. For instance, I'm praying that by the end of the lockdown, every positive person in Nigeria would have become negative. And I want you to join me to pray. I'm praying and say, God, don't leave us to our medical system. If 2,000 people could die in 24 hours in America with the best of facilities, hey, brother, brother, God needs to hear our prayer. Supernaturally, those beds, beautiful setup on that Lagos field, my prayer is that they will not be used. They will eventually be folded up and be used for regular medical practice. Lord, intervene for us. So, join us to pray. My action I'm taking is to communicate that word to you. Is to tell you, this is what we are praying. Join us to pray because I believe that by the prayer of many, at the end of it, thanksgiving will rise up to God for our salvation. As many of us, if you believe that God does heal the sick, if you believe that God can heal nations, you will join with us. Nigeria will be healed. That's why I'm bothered. That nations, you know, I hear the other day the release by governors in the north that, well, they can't shut down, they can't lock down because their people are farmers. Are there people in Lagos fishermen? Are there people in Abuja what? Civil servants. Friends, take your own life in your own hands. Don't wait for government. Stay at home. Take action. We're not going to be killed by the flu. This virus will not reach us. How do you know? He said, no plague will come near our dwelling. So I mean, I'm at home in my own house. That's where I have a word. He says, by his stripes, ye were healed. Even if you have the flu, Jesus already took it upon his body. I pray that you will be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So I will not take negative. I'm doing all I believe I need to do. Stay home. If you are my age, you should know better. It's not time to be roaming around. It's even said that at this parent, grandparents must not hug their grandchildren. Our immunity to new things are not the same. So take meaningful steps. Have you not read, my people perish for lack of knowledge? The devil cannot kill you. He only helps you to do foolish things that will take you away from here before your time. But because you are wiser than that, you will take meaningful steps that will protect you. 
So take action, corresponding action. You're praying that God, when Abraham in that scripture, if you really look at Luke, Romans chapter 4, look at 18 to 22. You say, follow Abraham, who then, who had no reason, he believed God. He totally believed. What did he do? He resumed to have sex with Sarah. If he did not begin to have sex with Sarah, Isaac wouldn't have been born, even though he had the word of promise. So what action does God need? Look at Joseph in Egypt. Seven years of plenty. What action was he taking? He was stockpiling grains for seven years. Families could have done that. Businesses could have done that. But they did not have enough faith to keep enough store that would last them seven years. So they didn't believe that another seven years of fun. You say, no, no, I know. No, you don't because you are not taking meaningful action. Corresponding action. That's how you show that you know. Listen, you can't do by faith what you require obedience. If you believe in the word that God has spoken to you as a, an individual, as a business, as a family, you will take action on that word. Action, you know, pursuit. Eventually, it's hard in Mark Mudok, but he said pursuit is what shows your desires. I don't want to be killed by the virus, so I'm locked up at home, trusting God. The country will open up again. And I told you the other day, the advert by South African Airways says, stay home now so you can travel again tomorrow. Those of you who are not staying home, it's not anybody you are working against. You don't have faith. You don't have faith. Faith is informed by... No, faith is not presumption. Faith is not saying, no, nothing will happen to me. No. What informs your faith? There's got to be a body of knowledge that is the basis of that action. Then and only then can you say you are acting. And as a Christian, faith is in God's word. I'd like to pray with you you will come out of this stronger. If you have never been living supernaturally before, I trust that these three weeks, this one month, has been enough dress rehearsal. When you come out of this lockdown, I do not expect that your life will continue naturally anymore. It is time for you to be that person that God is talking about. It is time for you to trust God for a bag of rice. It is time for you for God to trust God for a new initiative. Start a supernatural business. Run it supernaturally. Live your life in such a way that, listen, you no longer knock on men's door. You knock on heaven's door and have grace from God. That's where you earn respect from men. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing over your people. As many as are not born again who have joined us today and desire to be born again, we are asking that as they ask you to forgive their sins, Lord, intervene for them. Bring them healing in the name of Jesus. Forgive their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Lord, I prophesy healing over everyone that is healed. Are there people among them that are bedridden at home the last year, the last 10 years? I command you to be healed. Up on your feet. Are there people there who are blind, have not had to, I speak to those blind eyes, be open. Be open. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, in this season of healing, you will not be left behind. Experience this healing that is upon us as a people. Experience this season of healing that is upon us as a country. Experience this season of healing that is upon us as a world. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for healing us as families, healing us as businesses, and meeting our needs beyond measure. Be glorified, be magnified. For we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being part of the service today. I'm sure that shortly we will be seeing physically. And if you are in the city of Uyo, when once services normal, services resume, we would like it to be a great joy to meet with you again and to take the testimonies of what God has done while you were in isolation or you were in lockdown. Don't forget, get in touch. Let them know the 
the reporting system, the house fellowship leader in your area know that your own house church is doing well. And if there's anything they can do to help with your situation, through them, we will get to know how to intervene. God bless you and have a wonderful time.